Well, here it is. It is uh, Monday. What's the date? June 24th. And this is episode number 756. And it will be a solo episode. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, a lot of good guests coming up in the next, uh, excuse me, <coughs> fried voice. <laughs> A lot of great episodes, uh, guests coming up here in the next few weeks, but thanks for tuning in. And speaking of that, I just uh, did J.J. French's podcast today uh, from Twisted Sister. I had him on the podcast, I think about five, six years ago, and uh, great day today. Sat down on his podcast. That'll be out next Tuesday. And uh, what a great dude. We hit it off on all kinds of shit, watches, music, comedy, New York City, Bill Graham. So look out for that. Very, very cool human. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm here. I am back from a four day run in San Jose with the great Bill Burr. And that um, is pretty much my last uh, four nights on the bird tour, it, it winds down here in two nights in Seattle where he will shoot his brand new special. So uh, congrats to Bill and thank you so much for the incredible year and a half of insanity. Total dream come true shit. I've said it over and over and over, but it's just true. I played all the venues. I dreamed of playing as a musician. I did them as a comedian. And now the goal is to do them as a headliner. Always keep your eye on the prize, man. But uh, it is true. It'll be amazing to go back and do them on my own and uh, just have that much experience that Bill provided for me. And also just being an incredible mentor and a great, great friend. The guy is at the top of his game. I truly believe he is the best comedian right now working in America, hands down. I can't say the world because I don't know what the fuck is out there. You got some British comedy that smokes your American comedy. I'll tell you, you and your wanker stuff. <laughs> I don't know what I'm fucking doing, but I'm uh, in a pretty good mood today. And, uh, and, and thank you, San Jose, all the new fans that uh, were messaging me on Instagram saying how great uh, I did. It means the world to me. And a lot of people that have seen me multiple times were commenting that I was way better. And I was like, wait a minute. I was pretty good a couple years ago. <laughs> that, that's what goes in my mind. Instead of going, oh, good. The hard work's paying off. I'm like, wait, a couple years ago, I was pretty fucking good. <laughs> anyway, I'm a lunatic. But, oh, wow. We were at the San Jose Civic and... I had talked about seeing Dio there in 1983 on the Holy Diver tour, Dio and Queensryche. And that is really the gig that really stands out to me of the San Jose Civic. Now, as I was in the venue and walked around, they had these giant, beautiful photos of people that have played there. And then I was like, oh, shit, I was there. Tesla, Ted Nugent. Um, you know, quite a few shows that I've seen and they've had some bands there that were blowing my mind. The history of that building. I just had no idea. Like kiss played there in 1976, which I believe is the love gun tour cream played there. Barbara Streisand, uh, Crosby stills and Nash. I mean, pretty much everybody had played there. It was wild. And I'm sure before the sharks arena, it was pretty much where every touring band played because it was a little smaller and they could do that market and then roll into San Francisco and do the Cow Palace or Oakland Arena. And uh, so they got a lot of fucking shows. And the, the venue, like a lot of these venues, I went to a lot when I was younger. And then now that I performed in them, like the Warfield or the San Jose Civic, it just seems smaller when you're a kid. They open the front doors. You run to the fucking rail front row. Fuck yeah. Dio bring on Dio. Holy diver. You're just crunched 
I'm like, at the time I'm probably five foot four. So I grew like two more inches over my lifetime <laughs> at five, six now on a good day. But, uh, yeah, you get up on that rail and you're just there all night and, uh, you hope you don't have to piss cause you got your fucking spot. You put your arms out, right? Like this is me. I don't put your arms down. That's a rookie move. Cause then someone will get fucking right on you. And then you're like in there like this for four hours. So you get your arms out and you just kind of rest. And over the years, you start to get to know the security guards and they know you. They're like, oh, there's that fucking short dick, fucking lunatic. You know, there was this redhead secu uh, security guard that worked for Bill Graham. And I got a picture of him actually at ACDC. I snuck a camera in and I was shooting Angus going by me and the dick's in the photo. And I was looking at the photo and I was like, oh, that's that fucking dick. You know, he'd just be a dick like, you know, fucker, I'll throw you out. Bustling his uh, power, you know, flexing his power down there in the front. But you get a little politics going and uh, be good to the guys and they would do good shit for you over the years, you know, get you the set list. You know, a pick doesn't make it all the way to you. <clears throat> They pick it up and hand it to you because they knew you. You're at every fucking show. I was talking to Bill. He's like, fuck, you saw everybody. And I really did see everybody but Skinner and Zeppelin, which is wild to think about. But uh, it was great to be in the San Jose Civic. And it got me thinking about Queensryche, Dio. And Queensryche was on that EP, that tour of the EP, Queen of the Reich and all that stuff. And then I started listening to Queensryche last night just chilling around the couch again. I, I had Jeff Tate on years ago. And it's really amazing to me how fucking great this band is. And I started thinking, you know what? Queensryche is absolutely underrated. And I'm not quite sure why. I think because once they got the silent lucidity and they got a little prog metally, maybe people, it, it, it was too smart for them. It was smart metal. I don't know. But as I listened to it, and hold on, let me... I was going through, they got a greatest hits record. That is just fucking insane. And it's not hits like in the, in the way that you would think radio hits, but in a metal world, there's always the, you know, that's a fucking, a, a metal hit is different than a radio hit. A metal hit is one where you're at a party and everybody's like, dude, throw on the warning, warning, warning. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going through, the, they've got a greatest hits record and it could be a perfect fucking collection of just metal. Let me get it for you real quick here, which by the way, Amazon is so stupid. They have two Queensryche um, categories, which I have no idea why. Some of these streaming platforms, you know, I love Amazon, it sounds great. But some of them are just fucking garbage, you know, because it's like, what is the, is it two different labels cashing in on the streaming? Is it, uh, what is it, you know? So let me find it. Here it is. Greatest hits. I found it. So I started listening to this. It came out in 2000. And I was just going through how uh, great Queensryche is and how fucking great Jeff Tate is. Look, I mean, I've talked about it before. The guy, you got these guys, you got Dickinson, you know, he's out there, you know, number of the beast, killing it. And then Queensryche, here comes G off, Jeff Tate. And he is just another fucking level. But look at this, Queen of the Reich, which is the big hit on the EP that introduced everybody to him. KSJO. This is Queen's Reich, Queen of the Reich, KOME Radio. They all played it. Then Lady Wore Black, The Lady Wore Black. <laughs> Warning, Take Hold of the Flame, Walk in the Shadows. That song's great. Uh, I Dream in Infrared. I don't remember that. Uh, I Don't Believe in Love. Fucking great. Eyes of a Stranger. Unbelievable. Jet City Woman, another fucking hit. Empire, great. Then, of course, the big, big heat radio smash, Silent Lucidity. Um, 
I am I. That's a great one. And then I don't know the last few, so it must have been on the later records. Bridge, Sign of the Times, Chasing Blue Skies. Uh-oh, turned it on by accident. Um, Chasing Blue Sky and then someone else. Anyway, the first 12 songs on this is just metal at its finest with just insane guitar playing, insane drumming. And, you know, this is really the ground zero of bands like um, Dream Theater and shit. Because, like I said, Queensryche got, like, in into kind of nerdy, proggy metal. You had Injustice for All, which was total prog metal. But then Queensryche just goes to a fucking another level, man. They're singing about weird shit. They're not singing about chicks at all. Except for maybe, like, Lady Wore Black or... Uh, you know, I don't believe in love or Jet City Woman, but they're still like crazy, dark, weird tunes. So, man, I, I enjoyed last night just cruising some Queens Reich on a Sunday night, usually reserved for, uh, for you know, John Mayer's Born and Raised and uh, Carol King Tapestry. Here I am home, just engulfed in the uh, old sentimental memories of Queens Reich and the San Jose Civic and that whole area in San Jose right there, the Cactus Club and uh, all kinds of rock and roll memory there for me. Even later, the Sharks Arena, seeing Slayer in there. Holy shit on the, uh, uh, I think it was Christ Illusion record. Unreal, man. Unreal audiences in San Jose. They were just fantastic. No jack-offs. They were really listening, man. You could fucking hit a punchline and it would just bam. Great place to shoot a special for sure. Cause it felt like just this real small mini, mini intimate arena. And uh, Bill killed. He was just four nights in a row warming up for his uh, shooting a special at the Moore Theater this week. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's going to be great. I won't be there, but man, I hope you got a ticket. You're going to witness him filming his brand new epic special. Can't wait to see it. Also, when we flew home, we landed in Burbank. Bill and I were walking out and I ran into Jack Blades and we shot the shit with him for a little while. It was amazing. I love LA airports. You never know who you're going to run into. You got to keep your eyes open. You know, you got to keep your eyes open. Get, get your face out of the phone, man. When you're at LAX or Burbank, keep your face out of the phone. There are fucking people in there, man. It was funny. We were walking down the long hall at the airport, and I saw this, uh, like, open mic comedian. And he, he, he's just a, he just really doesn't understand the etiquette of comedy. He's always DMing me, like, hey, I'm going to be at such and such. Come see me. I'm like... Hey, hey, dude, I don't want to be rude to him, so I just don't answer. But I'm like, what the fuck? I would never fucking do that when I started out. DM some comedian that's working in the biz. Hey, come see me at an open mic. Anyway, I only know him because he was wearing the outfit that he is wearing in the DM. He didn't send me a picture. It's just his, uh, the you know, the circle, the fucking emoji or whatever that thing's fucking called, your face. And I'm walking, and he had his face in his fucking phone, and here comes the greatest comedian in the last 20 years, Bill Burr, walking by, and I'm with him, and the guy's just face in the phone, didn't even fucking, it was perfect. I was like, oh, my God, that's that fucking guy. And we just walked right by him. It was awesome, man. Imagine. Imagine you play guitar, and you fucking, you DM uh, fucking David Gilmore and you're like hey David I play a little guitar too uh, we're playing up at uh, Spanky's Bar and Grill maybe come down and check us out <laughs> look I mean I'm not knocking him for shooting his shot but the insanity of that it, it, you have to be a little insane to start comedy I'm gonna 100% agree on that but the insanity of like reaching out 
multiple times. If the person doesn't answer or whatever, multiple times, like, hey, I'm going to be at this open mic. Come on down. Fucking does not understand the temperature. <laughs> I'd like to see him do that to like somebody else, like a mean comic. I could be mean if it's like somebody drunk at a gig. I, I, I'm never really mean, but if they come up, I, yeah, I'm fucking dude, slap you in the back. I fucking love you, man. Fucking, ah. I just fucking shoot in there. Guinness beer spit on your face. I could be rude real fast. Bam. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so people, sometimes people would be shocked. They'd be like, whoa, you didn't put up with that at all. And it's like, oh, I've been putting up for a lot of shit for years. And then it'll just somebody will come with their their Guinness breath and it'll just they're going to get it. That's what the. You're going to get my couple years of up and down depression and struggles and um, inner demons. You're getting it. Here it is. Like a fucking, like Spider-Man with the web just right all over your face. <laughs> oh, by the way. Oh, man. This is the great thing about going to the Bay. I always get to see old friends. And, and you know, I worked at the Stone for years, the stone, the Omni and the one step beyond. And I still have great friends and memories from that era. And Ann and PJ came down who worked with me for years there. And it, it was just so fucking great seeing these guys. And um, it was funny because Ann was like, oh, I go, hey, how'd you like the show tonight? Cause I, I had some great sets. I'm really focused right now. I'm really dialing it in. And uh, she goes, oh, yeah, it was great. You know, the last time I saw you, and I was like, oh, no. She's like, you had this cat bit. And I still fucking laugh about that because I have cats. And I was like, okay, cool. I, did, I thought she was going to say last time was a little better. But, you know, she's, she's sentimental over the cat bit. And I get it. I get it. <laughs> I used to do this bit. I don't remember a lot of the bits until somebody reminds me. Like, Steve is like, oh, I like that one bit you do the fuck sounds and i was like oh yeah so i just did it in the set friday night i was like how'd that go and i just kind of run it in my head and walk on but uh i don't really you know i write a bunch of stuff i go do it for a couple of years and then i put it away because i don't want people to go he does the same shit all the time i'm constantly trying to get the set you know keep it fresh but unfortunately i do a lot of the same areas because they don't get booked in other areas so these people come and i'm like oh fuck they were here six months ago they're gonna they're gonna know that the stuff and i don't want to disappoint them it's just always just it's part of the business man anyway the cat bit was uh you know i, I said a, a buddy of mine called me a couple days ago and he he said he bought a cat and i was like bought a cat nobody ever buys a fucking cat Right? You just open your door and a couple shit cats move in one day. You know, every neighborhood has like five shitty cats. And one day you, you're like, I guess we got cats. And then like years go by and you're like, I guess we don't have cats. <laughs> and then I, I, I do some more shit on it. But that's the gist of the bit. And she reminded me and I was like, oh, yeah, that don't fucking cat bit. And uh, and then Marilyn Ricecove had a kind of a similar cat about her husband buying a cat. So I stopped doing it because it was buy a cat. And I was just kind of like, ah, fuck, you know. It's not the same bit at all, but similar. So then you, you get to this thing in your life where you're like, well, I guess I'll just drop it because I think she filmed it. And you don't want to be out there in the PR. You know, you fucking, you know, you, you joke deep, man. It's fucking funny. You got these people out there. They just fucking think they know how the business works. They have no fucking idea. You know, like right now, there's 400 trans jokes. Did they all rip off Dave Chappelle? Everybody's in the same fucking world. Unless it's word for word, like some people have been busted for. It's just premises. That's what it is. You got to explain it to people that aren't in the biz. They don't fucking understand, you know? You know, 
Leo had a barbershop joke and you did a barbershop joke. Yeah. 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 We'd be out of jokes. If somebody could own the premise, we would be out of, there would be no more comedy. There would be no more comedy. <laughs> That's why I always try to write stuff that personally happened to me. And, uh, it keeps it exciting too. Speaking of that, uh, shit. Uh, I was just going to say something. I can't fucking remember. Hold on. My brain's working pretty good though today. Um, I hope to come. Oh, oh, I know what I was going to say. I got a fucking sponsor. Let's get into that real quick. I bet you didn't think I was going to fucking say that. Sponsor time. X bet. Are you guys gamblers? You like betting on sports? If you're passionate about sports and looking for a thrill, you need to check out the freshly redesigned X bet. They're calling it the last sports book you'll ever join. I've been playing on XBet, and they really do have it all. Whether it's odds on basketball, combat sports, or even betting on the next Bitcoin dip. The best part is when you win, they pay quick. But it's not just about placing bets. XBet is a whole experience. They support athletes and sports shows just like ours. And they give back to the community with tons of free bets and cash prize contests. Did I mention that they're also a casino now? Spin the slots, play some roulette, or try your luck on the live tables. All from a mobile platform that lets you enjoy the fun on the go. Whether you're super into sports betting or just curious about trying it out, you need a site that makes it fun and easy. And that's why you got to go check out XBet. Sign up today using the promo code Delray, D-E-L-R-A-Y, and get a generous bonus of up to $1,000 on your first deposit. That's right, promo code Delray, D-E-L-R-A-Y, for a free cash bonus to kickstart your betting journey. With so many great UFC cards on the horizon and the baseball season in full swing, there's never been a better time to play. Make your next bet on XBET. Remember, that code is D-E-L-R-A-Y. Okay, thank you, Xbet, for uh, supporting the, uh, the podcast. It means a lot, man. Fucking, you know, I've been doing this pretty much a long time for free. So any Patreon or sponsors is fucking greatly appreciated. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. We've got over 150 bonus episodes on there, and I'll be dropping one this week. And I will be doing a live Zoom with any of you Patreoners out there. All right, back to it. Back to the show. I'll tell you, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Christy McVie lately. And uh, she passed away. And I talked about how great she was on an episode months back. But it's been even like deeper with me lately, it really resonates to me how amazing her voice is and how incredible she was in Fleetwood Mac. And what made me think about it was Stevie Nicks said, there will never be another Fleetwood Mac uh, reunion because Christie's gone and that's the end of it. And if that's true, that is fucking beautiful because it is true, you know? That band was so goddamn unique three different singers, all these different eras. You got the Peter Green era. Then you got the fucking era after him. And then you get uh, Stevie Nicks in there. And and then, you know, Christy McVie's writing these beautiful songs. And Stevie becomes a master giant star solo. It's unreal, this band's story. But Christy McVie, man... Just a solid, solid artist and songwriter. One of the greatest. And I'm not going to sit here and go, one of the greatest females of all time. No, man. One of the greatest. The amount of hit songs she wrote, her voice was so fucking unique. It wasn't that American Idol bullshit of how high can you sing and how crazy you are. She's just over there on the keyboards delivering these beautiful, soulful vocals. And uh, I just wanted to mention it again because I've been listening to it a lot and I made a playlist of uh, Christy McVie, just Fleetwood Mac tunes. It's beautiful, man. When she comes on, it is 
on with me, man. Like I love Stevie Nicks. She's a soldier in that insane world of how big they got. But Christy McVie, she had the ultimate, she's the career you want. You want mad respect from your peers and you want to be able to kind of walk down the street a little bit and not be mobbed. And that's a great, great career where you're just able to do theaters, arenas, and, and people come out, but you can live your life and you're respected by your peers. That's really what it is at the end of the day. You know, I think at the end of the day, the number one thing is you want to be respected by your peers. I wonder if I talk to, <clears throat> let's say somebody like, uh, Jim Norton, comedian, Jim Norton. I wonder if I said, Hey, would you rather be a, an arena comedian or respected by your peers? I wonder what he would say. In Bill's case, it's both. He's respected at the highest level by his peers and he's an arena comic. So it's real fluke that somebody stuck to their guns and the people, you know, grabbed onto it. Cause most people grab on to shit. I'm not talking comedy. I'm just saying just in general, people like a, a big fucking bucket of shit. And I started thinking about in my lifetime, when did this shit show start? There's always been pop bands and that's never bothered me. Pop people are going to come and go. And that's just part of the industry that helped pay for the, you know, the Bob Dylan's and the fucking, Queens of the Stone Age and the the uh, the acts that you know Elliot Smith stuff like that. <clears throat> but I really sat down and it hit me a couple days ago on Instagram. I follow this Beavis and Butthead account, and I fucking love Beavis and Butthead. Um, it it is some of the funniest fucking shit. It's something that I wish that I was involved with. I wish I could be one of the voices. Just so I'd be like, oh, everywhere I went, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm Beavis. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. But it. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, some of the funniest shit ever. And some people did get fucking severely trashed from it, like winger and shit like that. But, you know, it's a uh, comical Anyway, I'm following this Beavis and Butthead. And then I guess there's new ones out. So there's clips on YouTube. And they're really trashing uh, Jersey Shore, that old reality show. And it's so fucking funny. You know, there's this one scene where they're like, Snooki's getting arrested. She's all drunk. And uh, Beavis goes, yeah, yeah, they're mistaking her for a seal. That's why they're arresting her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at that point she's just drunk on the ground like a fucking seal at marine world <clears throat> but it hit me it hit me last night i truly believe the downfall of the business given a fuck about art the massive business not the cool business like say a24 that's making great films or or Rick Rubin that's making great records or people like that or, or Tarantino. But I truly believe the fall of the business of people caring about art, like let's put some good shit out. It happened from the success of Jersey Shore. And it hit me last night. The Kardashians would not fucking exist without Jersey Shore. 100% would not exist. They owe everything to Jersey Shore, the Kardashians. They should be giving them royalties because that Jersey Shore is the ground zero of shit. And when you look at that, just clips, and the way that America grabbed onto that GLT, Jim Tan Laundry, when you look at that shit and the way people jumped on it and then people started dressing like Snooki and shit, that is the end of art. And then here comes the Kardashians. They just take it up about 700 notches 
And ever since then, the Jersey Shore, as we can thank them for turning this whole shit show uh, of America, what we got going right now. Thank you, Jersey Shore, for just fucking ruining it out there. The situation. <laughs> oh, fuck. It hit me, though. Do you agree? I mean... People fucking love garbage. Now, I did read that uh, reality TV is really drying up. And, uh, yeah, the reason why is it's been pushed down everybody's throats for so long. They're like, all right, I'm fucking good on the reality TV. It's like uh, crowd work clips on Instagram. They have seem to have gone away. You know, people just eventually stop watching. Mm. Anyway. I think that I think Jersey Shore was the beginning of the shit show of America. What we have right now. <laughs> Woo wee, man, that's a statement, man. I fucking you come here on the show, man. I fucking lay down a statement. I'm fucking slinging some smart facts. I'm a fucking smart dude. <laughs> I'm fucking dumb, too. I get it. But I'm not dumb enough to watch fucking Jersey Shore, man. I just remember people are like, dude, are you watching Jersey Shore? It's on Sunday, man. I got to see if, if fucking uh, Gen Wow or whatever. And uh, that one guy with the crown hair, dude. The guy, the, the DJ. He's got so much hairspray. His hair looks like a crown. You know the crown emoji on the iPhone? That's what his hair looks like. It's just like these... Fucking crowns, <laughs> crown head. Oh my God. Anyway, uh, and then, you know, the situation, I was looking at him, I go, that guy kind of looks like the singer from Creed, which by the way, Creed, they got the, all these bands and I got to give my hat off to these fucking bands. These bands get beat down. They get huge, Creed, Limp Biscuit, bands like this. And then they get beat down and beat down and beat down after they're huge. They're the, you know, Nickelback. They're the fucking, uh, the, the hacky go-to punchline on, uh, at open mics, you know, at least I'm not in the Nickelback. But they, they fucking, you know, they get the beat down and then they rise from the fucking ashes and they come out and, it's all it's almost beautiful like these crowds are like hey man we shit on you we thought you were going away but now you're here like now we're fucking stronger than ever and look at creed put a tour on for sale and they're selling out arenas instantly in like six minutes so i saw him on good morning america like last week just came up in my instagram feed that's all i do instagram i don't do anything else I'm on there 24 seven when I'm at airports. I don't even feel lines or long waits. I'm just on Instagram. So Creed came up and I was never a Creed fan. No biggie. Uh, they had some fucking hit songs, catchy songs, arms wide open, massive fucking ballad. Uh, I met the singer a couple times at the comedy store. Cool dude. Anyway, they come on and they play this fucking band. They're, I, I guess they're probably 50 years old. The, each guy just chiseled, perfect shape, look amazing. They're not all fucking fat blobs with, you know, they're not missing any band members. They've got the four guys that put, put up a fucking war. And uh, singer sounded exact to the fucking record. Not running tape, singing live, looking like Elvis. Almost. He's got this leather outfit with the high collar, guitar player killing it. And the same with Limp Biscuit out playing right now. I saw him. They played in like Denmark yesterday, 80,000 people. And, and bands that were clowning them back in the day are up on stage taking fucking pictures with them. Like we're with the fucking biscuit. And, and it just led me to believe, you know, that these guys the the amount of fucking brutality of clowning they got and they're still standing 
that is fucking solid, solid humans. All of them out there like to be able, they didn't tap out. They didn't quit. They're like, oh, fuck you, man. You got a number one hit. You got five number one hits. Say whatever you want. I remember Nickelback. They came backstage to the gig in, uh, in Vancouver, Bill and I, and they were the coolest fucking guys. And Bill had sold out the Rogers arena. And, uh, I go, you guys played here a few times, right? And the guy goes, yeah, we sold it out 15 times. Place holds 19,000. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, man. 99% of the people in the business have not sold out Rogers Arena once. These guys 15 fucking times. So anyway, I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm fucking for a listen to them or whatever. But when it comes on now, I'll just give it a listen like Sirius XM. I'll give them a fucking, I'll raise the flag. I'll raise the flag. You guys fucking won. Still in the biz. Hardest business you could be in. Music, movie, or comedy. Live business, live entertainment. Hardest thing you could fucking do in your life. Decide to step on stage, record music or a comedy special, and put it out there and get ready for the fucking fuck this guy. You know, and I, I posted in my Instagram today, I put a, a giant leather jacket on with fur on the front. And I said, uh, this is the jacket I like to wear when uh, I want to get people to say, fuck this guy. Everybody should have a fuck that guy jacket or outfit or attitude because, uh, you know, the other the other decision is boring. You're walking around. You're just boring. You're just a fucking mouth breather walking around in America. I know what I'm talking about. But the people that take fucking full, full fucking grasp of their identity and wave their freak flag, as uh, Jimi Hendrix would say, are the interesting people, are the uh, soldiers and are the uh, troopers of, of life, man. So anyway, fucking Creed, I'm going to get, I'm giving you a thumbs up, man. I wouldn't mind talking to that Scott just to talk to him about singing. Guy still sounds amazing. And I met this guy. I met Scott when he was fucking at the rock bottom alcohol. I was pissing next to him in the comedy store and he looked over and he goes, Hey man, good set. And I was like, Oh shit. He still had the long hair. I go, Hey, you the guy in Creed, right? And he goes, yeah. Yeah, man, I had, fucking, I had a baby boy, man, and he got me a number one song. I'll never forget it. I was like, oh, yeah, all right. And I was like, this guy's fucking tanked. And I'm sure, I'm sure that, you know, you lose your band, you lose fans, you lose your wife. I think they're finally getting divorced or whatever. It's fucking a beat up. But, man, they're selling out a tour. So congrats to them with arms wide open. Fuck yeah. <laughs> a couple more things then I'll get out of here. I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I will be at uh, Minneapolis at uh, Acme in July, four nights. Please get tickets in advance. I will be in Las Vegas at the Comedy Cellar uh, seven nights doing a residency at the Rio Hotel. And I will be at the Blue Room in Springfield, Missouri in August. All those are on DeanDelRay.com. I'll also be at the, um, in November, the, uh, what do you call that? The Comedy Store in La Jolla. Sorry. Fucking pulling it together. Uh, last thing I want to talk about. So if you follow me on Instagram, I was driving home last night from uh, Trader Joe's. And this fucking rocket was flying over me. Clear sky out. Fire coming out of this fucking thing. A rocket. I couldn't tell what it was, but I knew it was some kind of rocket. It didn't have a UFO. You know, me being a specialist on UFO and a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Not. But... You know, it wasn't moving like uh, what they say UFOs move like. Like, it was here, and then it was over there, and then it went up, and then down, and then a, a figure eight, which no uh, Earth Earth vehicle can do that. 
and then it just disappeared. <laughs> so anyway, it looked, you know, I grew up in the fucking sixties and seventies. So I remember the NASA launches and that fucking coolest rocket ever made that white and black one that would pieces would fall off as they were heading towards, uh, you know, the moon. Or, or as some people would say, on the Burbank lot with uh, Kubrick in the background filming it. <laughs> um, <laughs> people. Uh, anyway, so I, I reckon, so there was like eight cars on the road and we all just stopped in our lane, which I was thinking, imagine if it really was a UFO, you, you know, you would just be dust. You just stopped in your lane and, if you, especially if you're in a Tesla and the UFO just turned your electric car off, but we all stopped like, what the fuck? The way the fire looked across the sky. At first, I will admit, I thought it was a shooting star because I've seen some shooting stars out in Joshua Tree that are fireballs and then they kind of burn out. But when you're out there, they don't have any light pollution so you can really see a fucking shooting star so at first i thought it was that but then it kept going and i was like that is insane that's definitely a rocket so i whip out my uh, iphone and i'm doing comically a instagram video of like a tribute to the old bigfoot videos of the 70s where they're kind of wobbling and blurry and and i'm like what 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 is that what what is, what is that i think it's a ufo and i'm filming it you know wobbling but i am kind of wobbling because at first i'm driving you know and then i just stop so i can get a little and it got behind the clouds i mean what i think it's a you what is that and i post it up and I wrote, uh, hold on, let me see what I wrote here. I, I just fucking love, I love the internet, people. I love the insanity of the internet. So I wrote, here it is. Here is my shitty UFO footage with the best iPhone camera made. So now I'm that guy with the blurry footage even in 2024. Hashtag UFO. Obviously. It is a joke because I used to do a joke when I first started comedy. I would be like, uh, you know, you know, there's blurry footage in 2019 or, or uh, 20, 2010. That's when I started comedy. Really? We have the iPhone, iPhone six. It would be perfect, but no blurry footage. Anyway, it was blurry because I was, I was excited to get it and I pinch zoomed. And when you pinch zoom on night, it gets all shitty, even on the best. I got iPhone 14. And uh, so I posted it up. It's an obvious joke. Obvious joke. I think two people got it. The rest of the people's comments are fucking hilarious. You know, like this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm taking a stab at this, but uh, you sound like a boomer. And you obviously don't know what a satellite launch is. Uh, next guy, too slow for a UFO. These people are, are, are adding like, I'm fucking on it. Kim Trails. There's always that guy. Kim Trails, Flat Earth. Um, let's see here. Um... Uh, Imagine not knowing anything about SpaceX launches in 2024. You know, ooh, yeah, you, you got me, buddy. Uh, next guy, pretty good comment. That might be Jesus. <laughs> anyway, it's so fucking funny how nobody um, got the joke. And, um, you know, it only took me one second. I, I either thought it was a satellite launch or it was um, somebody fucking around with some kind of rocket, you know? And it was a satellite. It was Elon and um, Starlink, which uh, my buddy has. And I remember uh, Elon was talking about how he felt the entire world uh, deserves to have the internet 
And uh, it's just not right for people not to have it. So I'm inventing Starlink. And so I thought, oh, cool. He must fucking really care about the people. <laughs> yeah, Elon, he cares about the people. He wants to make sure people out in the desert or in uh, the middle of Africa or uh, some people out in the mountains of the Grand Canyon have uh, internet. Yeah, that's what he cares about. He cares about fucking money, man. My buddy lives in the top of the mountains in Fort Collins, and he goes, it's $149 a month for the low one, and it's like two-something for the fast one. So, yeah, he doesn't give a fuck about P. He just, he just gives a fuck about getting people's money. Like, you, too, can have internet finally. Give me 150 bucks. Anyway. It was funny to think about here. I thought Elon was putting these up there for people. Maybe it was like $20, $30 internet like everybody else pays. You know? Nope. You're paying old school, early 90s prices. 200 <laughs> Anyway, I love you guys. And uh, I hope to see you out at the shows. Go listen to some Queen's Ride today. And some Christy McVie. And tune in to hear me on JJ French's podcast next Tuesday. And check out my patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey for all the bonus episodes. Keep the candles lit, my friends. I love you. See ya.